what it means is, is that on that tree is every form of evil when you got that root of covenants in your life. You're going to steal for it. You're going to lie for it. You're going to cheat for it. You're going to lay down with somebody for it. You're going to do everything for it. There's nothing that the devil can't ask you to do that you will not do when you love money like you're not supposed to. Anybody hear me up in here? This is why the world says everybody got their price. Because they know that everybody loves money like that. We should get to a place where, listen, man, we don't love it like that. We're not going to do anything for no money. And I'm going to tell you right here that the tithe is a cure for covetousness. Okay, Leviticus 2730. <clears throat> the Bible says, and this is going to bless you now, this is going to bless you. It says, and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's, is holy unto the Lord. And if a man will at all redeem all of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fit part thereof, and concerning the tithe of the herd, of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth, the tenth, shall be holy unto the Lord. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. Don't change the tithe. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. <clears throat> These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel. Father, that a blessing to the reading and the hearing the exposition of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give him glory. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Israel and crew, Josh, hallelujah, brother, y'all did a great job. Y'all did a great job. Hallelujah. All right, saints, let's get going. I'm going to set my little timer. Y'all, we've been talking about the engines of blessings, and we know that in the New Testament, there's three things, amen, that Yahshua himself spoke of uh, that represent blessings, hallelujah, uh, in the church. Um, you can be blessed, get yourself in a position of blessed through prayer, through fasting, but also through giving. Hallelujah. And uh, in the text, in the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus says, Hallelujah, you're going to get a reward from the Most High God for doing those things. We've often talked about prayer. We've talked about fasting a lot. Uh, but we have been remiss as a church in Lafayette, Louisiana, to talk about giving as much. And we didn't talk about giving in the past a lot because of the naysayers. Amen. Uh, people that would say that, that hallelujah, we're just a money church or something like that. And we know that that couldn't be further from the truth. If people are not ready to come to church, amen, don't lie about what's going on in church, amen? Just, just say you're not ready, all right? Just say you're not ready to release some things, and they, but they want to make excuses. I don't come because it's that. I don't come because it's that. And how do you know what it is if you've never been? That's the logic behind what's going on. But, 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 but because of the naysayers, in this particular locale, this jurisdiction, this venue, we have been <clears throat> reluctant to talk about all the, all the times God talked about money in the scriptures. In fact, there's only about 500 verses about prayer, about faith combined in the scriptures. But when we look at finances, when we look at money, there's over 2,000 scriptures in the word of God on how Christians should either handle their money or God using examples about money. And so, hallelujah, if we, if we, if we negate to, to talk about those scriptures, then we're not really preaching the whole counsel of God. If we don't talk about those scriptures, then we don't really equip the people on how to handle finances God's way. If they don't handle finances God's way, they're never going to be blessed the way that God wants them to be blessed. Because his ways are higher than our ways. Our, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so, hallelujah, just like every area of our lives, amen, he knows best, amen. And so it is the same way in finances. And so we started off this series, we talked about the tithe, amen. And when we talked about the tithe, we wanted to make it clear that the tithe is not something that the church invented. It's not something invented by the Baptists, the Catholics, the Pentecostals, the Methodists, the Presbyterians. It's not something that's invented by Philadelphia or Pastor Omar or any of the ministers or First Lady or the deacons or the deaconesses. We didn't invent that word. We find the word tithe in the scriptures. Why? Because God invented the tithe. He created it. And so when people get mad about the tithe, don't get mad at us. Get mad at God. 
don't shoot the messenger. You understand what I'm saying? We just preaching what he told us to preach. And in our text today, it says all the tithe belongs to the Lord. So if God going to say that and you get mad at us for preaching it, who you really mad at? You're mad at God. You're mad at God. You're not mad at us. We just doing what our king told us to do. All right? He created the tithe. We gave the definition of the tithe. The tithe is 10%. It's 10%. It's 10% of our income. It's 10% of our revenue. And I'm going to tell you right here, it's not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. The God that wake you up in the morning, give you strength, make sure you're in your right mind, probably bless you with that job anyway, because you was unemployed before he gave it to you. All right? He give you that job and give you the strength to go work it, and all he asks for is 10%, all right? He tells you, you could keep the $90, just give me 10 of it, all right? That's a good deal, man. That's a good deal. I don't know about y'all. And then when you give him the 90, after giving him the 10, he blesses the 90. He blesses the 90. Huh? And like it's always been said, I'd rather have a blessed 90 than a curse 100. Hey! <laughs> Why is it cursed? Second point is because it belongs to the Lord. It don't belong to you. It's his. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 hallelujah. So when you don't give it to him, it's called stealing. And that's what the Bible says. It says, shall a man do what? Rob God. And when we don't tithe, we robbing God. You ain't nothing but a home invader. You a carjacker. You a thief. You're a robber. It does not belong to you. And so when you come and give it, hallelujah, you feel good that you're obeying, but don't feel like you're giving God anything. Amen. You're only returning to him what belongs to him. Hallelujah. And then what does, what does that mean? After you give it, don't come back for it. <laughs> we got some that want to tie it on Sunday. By Tuesday, they won't come get it back. Baby, what you think this is? Hancock Whitney Bank? Or think we chase or something. Home bank, hold that for me, Pastor, till I need it. No, that's not, that's not how that go. It belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. The farmer, when they plant seed, they can't hold on to it and bury their hand in the ground. Ain't nothing going to grow. There's a release that have to take place. There's a release that have to take place. And so that's when you get the fullness out of your tithe. It belongs to the Lord. It predates the law because some people say that they don't tithe because it's old covenant, it's old mosaic law. And we, we, we say the devil is a liar because the tithe predated the law. And we gave you some biblical examples of Cain and Abel just fresh out the garden. Hallelujah, Abel tithe, and the Lord received it. We, we showed you Abraham and Melchizedek, two symbolic people in the Old Testament. Abraham, uh, a symbol of the father of the faithful, those who would believe. Melchizedek, a symbol of, of Christos, of Christ. Huh? Uh, they, them both picture the New Testament. One tithes, uh, showing us that all those who would believe like Abraham should tithe, Melchizedek, a picture of Christ, receives the tithe, showing us what? That as the faithful tithe, Christ receives that tithe and blesses them. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. <laughs> Baby, we've been working, all right? Uh, we looked at Jacob and Bethel as well. Jacob at Bethel as well, where Jacob vows that vow. We said that grace is always greater. Uh, those that don't believe we should tithe in the New Testament, hallelujah, they, they, they need to wake up. Because not only should we tithe, we should offer two. Huh? Tithe is the minimum. Tithe is the minimum uh, uh, that we should do. We looked at New Testament examples of giving. We looked at Paul's principles. Amen. And, uh, and, and so then we uh, uh, began to talk about another subject. Hallelujah. Uh, just offshooting this. We began to talk about why people don't tithe. All right? That's where we were. And I'm just reviewing because uh, I wasn't here uh, last Sunday. Mr. Sam did a terrific job. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Talking about knowing your God. Hallelujah. Uh, God must have said they need a break from pastor. And so, hallelujah, he was, he was, so, uh, he was so good to fill in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we were, we, were in, we were in Georgia. We were in Atlanta. Amen. And so, uh, so why people don't tithe? Number one, because they are unsaved. Some of them are unsaved. 
And what we need to understand is, is that the tithe is not for the lost. It's not for the unsaved. It's not for the unsaved. It's for the child of God. It's for the believer. And so if you're expecting somebody to unsaved to understand you giving to the church, they're not going to understand it. The tithe is not for the unsaved. Just like colors is not for the blind. They can't see it. Music is not for the deaf. They can't enjoy it. They, so how would you take a spiritual principle like the tithe and try to explain it to somebody who's spiritually dead? The tithe is not for the unsaved. And if you're not saved in here, you're not going to feel a compulsion to give God anything because in your eyes, you ain't got anything from him just yet. Oh, come on, give God some praise up in here. People don't tie because of lack of knowledge. Yes. You save, but you just don't know. All right? And we all have that learning curve. We got to get saved, learn the scriptures. And hopefully some, some people, when they get saved, they encounter a message like this where God will teach them, amen, uh, uh, how to tie. Um, thirdly, people are unaware of the link between God and his house, his church. And so we understand that God's been good to us. We want to give back to God, but we don't know how. God is in the heaven, and we down here, all right? And so God's been good. How do I, I'm saved, but how do I give to God? You give to God's house, huh? And that's, that's what the scriptures teach us. Uh, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. In Haggai, we looked at, he said, he said, hallelujah. He says, he says hallelujah, you dwell in your, your luxury houses, and my house lie waste, all right? He told the people, consider their ways. So we can't be balling, living good, while we ain't doing nothing for God's house. Come on, give y'all some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you remember, we looked at the Mormon church, and we looked at all the things they're doing, yep. because them people believe in the tithe. The tithe don't even come from them. It come from us. Yep. It's our heritage. It's our lineage, but they're using it better than us. Yes. And that church is able to do many things in the earth because they have money. Now, you could play games if you want, but money is a tool. Yes, is. And when you have it, you can get some things done. When you don't have it, hallelujah, you can be powerless. Are you hearing me up in here? I guarantee you that black folk would be treated differently if we would begin to pool our resources and get some money. But every time we pool our resources, they slander, they knock down, they put lies in the atmosphere, they use satanic attacks so we can divide against ourselves. We won't look at this one car and how they dress it, what kind of house they live in. All this is a game yes. that the devil is playing so we don't know how to pool our resources to effectively effectuate change in the earth. Oh, man, I'm... So we all come with our $50 each trying to change something. And it's never going to change with just $50. But if everybody put $10 together and we all come up there with a billion dollars, with property all over the place, churches all over the place, land all over the place, storehouses all over the place, churches in Africa and, and, the, and the Pacific and the, and the Bahamas and, oh, God, we got all of that and people everywhere. Huh? And we decide once again, Huh? To gather ourselves on Washington, D.C., like we did under Martin Luther King, and we come demanding our check again. Anybody hear me up in here? I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Some things gonna change. See, knee on the neck broke. Knee on the neck broke. No change. No change. No change. 
got to get our act together, y'all. Yes. All right? All right. And so we're going to continue, amen, talking about the reasons people don't tithe, amen, and pray that the Most High bless it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Deacon Carl. Hallelujah. He crept up so quietly just now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You now try to be good at that. In case I got to burn me. I'm just joking, y'all. I'm just joking. <laughs> Now you, Deacon, I love you. I love you, Deacon. Hallelujah. All right, so our fourth point as far as why people don't tithe, number four, because they don't love God like they think. They say it. They say they love God. They sing about it. I love you forever. Huh? But how many people know that you could... Okay, that, that you, could, you could sing something that you're really not living. All right? Hallelujah. Glory to the most high God. So, so here we go. Hallelujah. They don't really love God like they think. In the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew 6 and, and 21, it says, Hallelujah, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yeah. Hallelujah. Got you beautiful. Glory to God. Uh, this scripture is, is very simple. We quote it all the time, and I just want to bring it back to your remembrance. Whatever you spend your money on is what you really love. That's where your heart really is, and that's what it's saying. Whatever your treasure is, hallelujah, whatever you, you, you value, that's where, hallelujah, your, your heart going to be, and, and it happens vice versa, all right? Uh, uh, if God has your heart, then your treasure, your money, will be with him. Yes. All right? Yes. And that's all that is. And people say they love God, but they spend their money on everything else. Say that, say that. Say everything that. else. Everything else. To figure out what somebody really loves, all you got to do is look at their bank statement. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's convicting, too. Because you look at your bank statement, food, 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 food. <laughs> Burger King, McDonald, Burger King, McDonald, McDonald, Burger King, McDonald. <laughs> Windy. All right, all right. And and food is just an example, huh? Now, if you love clothes, huh? You gonna see you, what you gonna see? Oh, give me some stores. Give me some stores. Ross, 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 Ross. <laughs> old Navy, Old Navy, Old Navy. <laughs> Woo! Timu, 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 Timu. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about paparazzi. I got, I, got good, I got people close to me do paparazzi. I'm not going to talk about paparazzi. <laughs> wherever, your, wherever your heart is, that's where you're going to spend your money. If you love cars, it's going to be cars. It's cars is going, something about cars is going to be in it. Huh? If it's, if it's your nails. It's if your hair. Woo, God. Ooh, pastor, pastor. Don't do it, pastor. If it's movies, entertainment, huh? whatever you love is going to be reflected on your bank statement. Hmm? If it's drugs, if it's alcohol, if it's prescription pills, whatever you love is going to be on your bank statement. Now, people don't talk about you when you spend your money on all those things. But the moment you decide to give money to God, they could walk in, the clo in your closet and see every pair of Jordan that was ever created. <laughs> and you could show them, well, that's the news, that's the news. Nobody going to say anything. They're going to be happy about that. But if they know how much you give into church, that's when they're going to talk about you. Randy, Randy, can you see it? It's the devil. It's demonic. He will let you spend on anything but God. Anything but God. And these other things don't do anything for you. Don't do anything for you. We can tell what you love by your bank statement. All right? And we can tell if you really love God going deeper, hallelujah, by your giving statement. All right? Some of y'all give cash app. 
Some of y'all give simple gifts. Some of y'all give by check, you know. But the way it works is, at Philadelphia especially, hallelujah, if you decide, you can get a statement. You can get a, a statement of how much you've given for 2023. Right. All right? Now, if you're giving cash app, it's going to be a little bit of, it's going to be a little bit off, but you can always pull up your cash app and get that yourself. My thing is, you shouldn't be making $50,000 and only have given God two hundred. dollars It's just not right. And I done been there before. I done been there. Because listen, hallelujah, we, our heart is deceptively wicked. And we come in church like we the biggest giver. We look, we want to get the front seat. We we you know what I'm saying? But 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 when the statement comes, we look at it, we say, oh, they must be wrong. <laughs> no. Five dollars a week don't add up, no. Five dollars a week after 52 weeks is only $260. And I'm asking you. Is your God worth just $260? Him giving you 2023 and everything that he provided for you, is that worth $260? You paid, you paid more on your cable bill to watch mostly filth and trash than to give to the God that kept your heart beaten and your mind regulated for the whole year. You tell me if that's right. Pastor, well, I never saw it that way. Well, that's the way God sees it. Because he sees all, he knows how much you spun on hair this year. Oh, yeah. And one of them Brazilian things, baby. One of them. One of them. Eclipse you're given for the whole year at Philadelphia. That's why we have the tithe. The tithe is a percentage to make sure that we don't, that our heart don't to deceive us into thinking that we done gave a lot. If there's no, no rule right there that would, that would at, at least have us do the minimum, huh? we wouldn't really give much. We wouldn't really give much. Oh, you don't know, Pastor, when they need, I'm going to give. Well, you ain't gave them but $30. <laughs> don't make me pull your name up, up right now, up here, while we're here. All right? And what happens then, listen, it's a sign that we really don't love, hallelujah, God, like we think we do. Huh? So if you're making 50, guess what? When you look at your statement, the least you should have given God is 5,000. That's the least. For the year. For the year. 5,000. For the year. You know, that's nothing. That's nothing. All right? Hallelujah. Why? Because he's worth that. Paul says in Philippians 3, 8, going to the NLT, he says, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counted all as garbage so that I could gain Christ Paul said, in comparison to Christ, my money, my wigs, my nails, my car, my rims, my sound system, my clothes, compared to knowing Jesus, it's all worthless. And Paul says, it's garbage. It's trash. I'd rather, have, I'd rather not have any of that and know the Lord than have all of it and not know it. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Hallelujah. So that's why some people don't give. That love is not as strong as they think. Another reason is people don't give because they have a covetous spirit. They have a covetous spirit. They are actually operating in a spirit of greed. All right? And listen, you could be saved, hallelujah, and not, hallelujah, uh, 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 possessed by something. But something can still control you. It could be a stronghold, a bondage. And for some of us, we come out of so much struggle growing up, living a life of lack, living with nothing. 
And living with nothing and not having the things you want can psychologically affect you. It makes you a little bit tighter than the average person. Because subconsciously, you don't ever want to go back to being as broke as you were when you were living with your parents or when, when you were in school. And so you hold on to that money until blood come out your hand. Squeeze that money tight. Money no longer green when you give it, it's red. Be like, what that is? Jamaican money? What that is? No, no, that's a dollar. All right? It's a greedy spirit. It's a covetous spirit. And we got a lot of believers that's operating in that. And, and it's, it's a weird thing. A lot of times when people talk about somebody else, they project. Yes. You got to be careful. They project. And so when you're listening to a slanderer or a gossip and they're talking about somebody, begin to li- listen with discernment. Because sometimes what they say about somebody else is actually true about them. Mm. Pastor, what you mean? Oh, that church greedy. You greedy. And that spirit of greed has got you in such a headlock, such a figure folk, such a, a, a iron claw, huh? That you can't even give. And instead of giving, you make up an excuse. And instead of, hallelujah, going to the scriptures, hallelujah, that spirit lie to you and you project. You say, that church greedy. When all the while, you would pick up the mirror, you would see that spirit of greed moving and operating in you. And you could see it. It's not just in giving to the church. A greedy person is usually greedy in multiple areas. Huh? You ask that wife, they're going to tell you, oh, yeah, he greedy. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You ever try to touch his plate? He greedy. Huh? He greedy. Because he's not only not going to give to the church, but he ain't going to give to children. He ain't going to give to uh, people in need. Huh? Oh, y'all quiet out there? Lord, we bind that greedy spirit up right now. In the name of Yahshua Hamashiach, Ebobo who shot you, pop. Right? Look at your neighbor and say, don't be greedy. (laughs) Why? Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters. For either we will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Let's look at that in the NLT to provide a, a bit of a different spin. It says, no one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved by money. Is that not good? You know why you can't serve God in money? Because God going to tell you to do something that money going to tell you never to do. (laughs) Give what? Do what? Help who? Money said, boy, they tripping. You better put me in your pocket and let's go to the mall. Huh? Some people cannot tie because they love money too much. And at the end of the day, they love money more than they got. That's a lot of people, y'all. They all about their paper. Huh? It was in the music when I was coming up. We, uh, we all about the Benjamins. Get money or die trying. That's idolatry, and that's not for the saint. Some people just can't see themselves giving the church a percentage of their wealth, and I get it. But let me tell you what it's called. It's called sin. It's called sin, especially for the believer. For the believer, that's sin. Oh, yeah, that's sin. And you might not know it, but that's what it is. And you hide and hallelujah, that spirit of greed. 1 Timothy 6 and 10. Y'all all all right with me taking my time this morning? Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 6 and 10. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, black people sometimes make me sick. Well, I tell you what. (laughs) I love them and I hate them. You know what I'm saying? You know how you be watching black people? You say, I love black people. 
Then you look back the same day, I can't stand black people. <laughs> black people, boy, I'm telling you, boy, Sharon just do something to me sometimes. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, because we don't know our Bible. Money is the root of all evil. That's not what the white man think. That's not what the other racists think. You're the only one who don't know your Bible. Money is the root of all evil. And that's why you don't have any. <laughs> you better get that evil away from us. <laughs> and what the other races do? Come on, give it to me if you don't want it. <laughs> that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. It's the greed, it's the covetousness, it's the putting it before everything else. You having it don't make you evil. And subconsciously, black people, when we see people with stuff, oh, they just greedy, oh, they're evil. What? No, they blessed. You understand what I'm saying? They favored. Huh? It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Listen, it's the love of it. It's the covetous. It's the greed. And when he says it's the root of evil, Amen. The root is something hidden, something under the surface. The root is where the stem and the, the, the trunk comes from, all right? It grows up out of the root, huh? The root is where the, the stem, the, the trunk come from, the branches come from the trunk, hallelujah, and the fruit off the tree come from those branches. But it all starts off with the root. And when the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil, it tells you that if you have that, 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 that avarice, that, that, that greed, that spirit of covetousness in your life, it's going to produce a trunk. It's going to produce branches. And it's going to produce fruit. And what kind of fruit is going to produce evil? What kind of evil is going to produce all evil. For the love of money is the root of all evil. What it means is, is that on that tree is every form of evil when you got that root of covenants in your life. You're going to steal for it. You're going to lie for it. You're going to cheat for it. You're going to lay down with somebody for it. You're going to do everything for it. There's nothing that the devil can't ask you to do that you will not do. When you love money like you're not supposed to. Anybody hear me up in here? This is why the world says everybody got their price. You see? Because they know that everybody love money like that. We should get to a place where, listen, man, hallelujah, listen, man. We don't love it like that. We're not going to do anything for no money, man. All right? And I'm going to tell you right here that the tithe is a cure yes. for covetousness. It's a cure for it. If you were in here and I was a spiritual doctor, all right? Huh? Dr. Pastor Tebow. And I, I say, I say, I say, open up. I say, ah, ah. You stick out your tongue. All right? I check your heart rate. Check everything. Hallelujah. Open your eye. Good looking there. You look in your ear. Oh, I see, I see, I see some covetousness in there. I see some greed up in there. I see the love of money in there. Oh, but you come to the right place. I believe we have just the thing that'll cure that. I said, what's going to cure that greed in my life? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Next Sunday you come, go ahead and give the Lord 10% of what you brought in. And that spirit of greed is going to say, the devil is a liar. <laughs> but when you come the next week with that prescription, and boy, that spirit trying to hold on, say, don't give it, don't give it, then you fight and you give it. Huh? That spirit got to go. Hey. Anybody hear me up here? The tide is a cure for greed and covetous. Huh? Why should we get this love of money out of us? It says, which while some have coveted after, huh? when it becomes your God, hallelujah, it will pull you away from the faith. It will pull you away from the Bible. It's going to pull you away from God. It's going to pull you away from church. Which some have coveted after, they have, watched this, 
err straight from the faith. And not only that, and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. When you love money, hallelujah, it's going to pull you out of church. Eventually, it's going to pull you away from the Lord. And when it does that, hallelujah, you're thinking you're going to keep all that money and be happy without God. It's only going to be a life of misery and sorrow and heartache. God bless the truth. That was a good sneeze right there, too. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's why the world, they sing on the same songs. The more money we come about, the more problems we see. But you see, my God in his Bible, when we're doing it his way, say the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it no salt. Hey! Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Meaning that God, if you do it right and don't love it, he'll give it to you. It don't mean you ain't going to have no problems, but it ain't going to be like the problem that the, that the world didn't have when he got all that money. We watch TV, them people with all that money killing themselves. I'd be like, how are they going to kill themselves with all that money? Who going to spend that money? You see? See, but without God, it don't matter how much money you have. It could never make you happy, and it could never buy your love. In 1 Timothy 6, 17, it tells us about how we should act as believers with money. And I'm talking about you. Hallelujah. I'm talking about you. It says, teach those who are rich in this world. Teach them what? Teach those who have money in this world. Do what? Not to be proud. Don't be acting like you all that because you got a little money. All right? Don't act like that. How, don't act like that. He said, don't be proud because in a night it could change. How many people done had a bunch of money and then some things changed? Ooh, baby, ooh. I can tell you what changed. Joe Biden came. It just changed everything. All right, all right. I forgot where I was. Okay, all right. Listen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud. Watch this. And not to trust in their money. Second thing, don't trust in it. Amen. Don't trust in it. But what? How, why? Money is so unreliable. Oh, yeah. One day is here and the next day is gone. Uh-huh. Sidney Major. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. And so, hallelujah. We don't trust in the money God gave us. We trust in the God that gave us the money. And why did he give it to us? He gave it to us so that we could, the Bible says, richly enjoy. That's another thing. You have it after you're tired, baby, enjoy yourself. Go to a destination marriage conference. Huh? Travel. Eat out. Like, don't feel no guilty because God bless you. All right? He gave it for your enjoyment. As long as you don't love it, don't trust in it. Hallelujah. And then he says it, not only enjoy yourself, but tell them to use their money to do good. Amen. That they should be rich in good works. Amen. And what? Watch this. And generous to those in need. Always being ready, watch this, to what? To share. Ooh. Oh, we work in that spirit of greed in here. That greedy spirit got people moving around. <laughs> they moving in their seats. Huh? All right? How do he say share with others? By doing good, this will be storing up their treasure. Huh? Treasure where? In heaven. As a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life uh, in the hereafter. We use our money on this side to bless us on the next side. Come on. Come on. Give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we've been talking and we talked about why people don't tithe. And so today we talked about hallelujah. Uh, and I got one more uh, 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 that you don't, people might not love God like they think. We also said that a, that a covetous and a greedy spirit might be a stronghold upon somebody and they can't give and they need deliverance. And, and, and maybe this truth will set you free. But if, 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 if it's really strong and it's generational, 
and it come from mama, daddy, or grandparents, maybe you need somebody to lay some hands on you. Amen? Amen. Maybe you're going to need the altar to, to set you free. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's a real thing. Glory to God. Uh, uh, a real stronghold. It, it, it's a greedy spirit. Judas had the same spirit on him. Yes, All right? The same spirit on him. And that's why he was stealing when he held the bag. That love of money is the root of all evil. Person greedy like that going to steal, going to lie, going to do all those things. And so let's talk about the sixth one. This may be my last one for this morning. We want to talk about why people don't tithe. A mistrust or jealousy of their leaders, of their leaders. Yeah, yeah. They don't give to the church because... They don't want to give to the leaders of the church. They don't trust the leaders of the church, all right? And, and, and I, I just want to give a, a solution even before I start. I'm going to break my nose right here. If for some reason you don't trust the leaders of the church, get your tail out them people church. All right? Go somewhere where you can trust. Go, like, go do that. All right, but if it's a spirit of greed, it won't matter where you go. Huh? You could be the leader and you won't trust yourself if you got that spirit of greed. All right, so you got to find a place where you all right with what's going on, where you look around and you say, okay, all right, I'm giving and I see some things happening. We all right, I see some things moving. All right? And so mistrust or jealousy of leaders, all right? Uh, um, uh, now, the mistrust is in part because of bad leaders, okay? Bad leaders who have really taken advantage of God's people, all right? What you mean, Pastor? Well, they, 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 sometimes they go off, all right? Uh, 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 they go off, and, and, they, and they buy really expensive things, huh? Y'all know Bentley, Bugattis, and all that, huh? And they, they got rumors, they had rumors about Pastor Omar, People walk up to me on the street, you got a Bugatti? I said, a what? I almost thought he said Bugatti. I didn't know what he said. I was like, a what? At the time, I didn't know what a Bugatti was. I was like, what? I said, what that is? I, di I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? And so, so sometimes, hallelujah, uh, 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 pastors deserve the rap, the bad rap. Some of them do, some of them. Especially when they, when they have them, the churches that don't, hallelujah, uh, it, it, it don't equate. Uh -huh. right it don't equate. You're in a storefront. Uh -huh. Your church don't have nothing new, but you pulling up in something that's worth more than everything you got in your ministry. Wow. All right? That's unequal. That, that's not good. All right? That's not good. Now, I'm going to tell you all something right now, though. I do believe that when a pastor, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to go through it, when a pastor does well and the church is doing well, that it should be reflective on the pastor's pay. All right? All right? And some people, now, now the church is, is, is awesome. You know, and, 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 and they talk about the pastors being greedy. Listen to me right now. Listen to me. You could never say Joel Osteen is greedy. You, you, that shouldn't even open your mouth. You, that shouldn't come out your mouth. I'm going to tell you why people say it. Now, I'm not agreeing with how Joel do his thing. But when you walk over there and you see that church, that bar is in an a old NBA stadium. 30,000 people over there, they watch them all over the world. The boy in Japan, Joe Lo Sin, Joe, Joe Lo Sin. <laughs> Africa, oh yeah, Joe, Joe Lo Sin, Joe Lo Sin. <laughs> and he pull up in a BMW, and y'all want to say he greedy? You know how much that building is worth that he? And that's all under his leadership. I think it's foolish to talk about anything that he got. I think it's real foolish. You would never talk about any other CEO and what they have 
when especially the company that they're overseeing is doing well. There must be some incentive. And I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with your basic logic right now, and I'm about to put scripture behind. All right? All right? And so it's just, it's just, it's just logical. If you worked at a company that you made a whole bunch of money for, and they was paying you minimum wage, you think that would be fair? <laughs> so how a man work for God and be successful at working for God and souls getting saved all over the world for God and he still make Minimum, wait, man, man, the devil is a lie. If you think that that's right, then something wrong with you. I guarantee you, you would never want that to be you. But we go back to mistrust and jealousy of leaders. You got some people just jealous of Joel. And they're jealous of pastors. They're jealous of ministers. I promise you, I, I'm telling you the truth. And what I can't figure out is, is if you don't work as hard as that man, how can you expect to have the same thing as that man? So like, who watching you? <laughs> Are they talking about you in Africa? In China? Me no know you, me no know you. <laughs> So if they're not talking about you all over the world, how do you expect to have what he have when you have not done what they have? That's another spirit. That's the spirit of entitlement. You ain't doing what they're doing? Not yet. You ain't a CEO of too much. Walk in your backyard, I'm a CEO of this backyard. <laughs> but I don't know how much that paid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We also have what's, what's, what, what's going on is we have media intensification. Yes, and uh, uh, sensationalism. Yes. What I'm saying is, is that the media fights against the house of God. Yes, I want you to put your discernment on while you watch the news. Just don't sit there and watch that like a vegetable, <laughs> eating <laughs> and believing everything that tubes say. That's devil vision, yeah. That's not television, that's devil vision. I'm not telling you to go apostolic and throw your TV out. Because if it's a nice flat screen, I'm going to pass by and get it. All right? But while you watch it, use some discernment. Understand that there's a message that they're trying to get you to believe. It's called propaganda. Yes. And since the devil controls the media through his people, we know it because we can see the works of the devil pouring out of it, the lies of the devil pouring out of it. Yes. And when he talks about the church or the pastors, it's always going to be in a negative light. And they like to talk about the pastors. Now, we were watching a story, me and First Lady, a pastor, somebody came in while the pastor was preaching, and they robbed the church. Oh, wow. well, bust up in there, they robbed, you know, home invasion, church invasion. Negroes going wild. All right? John looking at John said, they're going to have trouble in Philadelphia. John said, we just as hood as them. In fact, they're going to say, give me all your money. Some people are going to say, give me all your money. Put it in the basket. Put it in the basket. And it better be 10%. Put it in. 
Got them gangsters in here. Don't you make us we fall back, slip back, backslide. <laughs> Some say, but they're not yet delivered. Been waiting to, to rob a Negro again. <laughs> it's for the Lord, it's for the Lord. <laughs> give it up, give it up, give it up. If you come and feel it like that. <laughs> I know a few headbangers, I could point them out up in here. Gosh, so well anyway, long story short. They run up in that church, East Coast, might have been like New York. Run up in there, rob that, look, everything on camera. Got the past out there, you know. <laughs> he had some nice stuff. Uh, they come rob the church, man. The media focused more on the type of call that the pastor had. It wasn't even part of the story. What is Carl got to do with some thugs running up in there? And immediately my discernment went up. They slander in the church again. They slander in the church again. Because of media intensification and sensationalism, the church is often painted in a bad light. If you read an article about Joe, I'm not defending Joe. I'm not even defending Jake's. I'm defending the church. Are you hearing me up in here? I'm defending the church. You read an article in AP and the Economist, anything, they'll say, Joel Osteen, a huh? uh, uh, prosperity preacher, one who believes in the money gospel, money. There is no such thing as a money gospel. There's only one gospel. And if they preach any other gospel, huh, it ain't a gospel. They invent words to program you again. You know? Now, let me, let's talk about the logic about that. Now, in any other field, in any other business, they don't talk about that. We don't hear about the kind of call Oprah drive. We never heard of Bill Gates' call. We, 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 I mean, we don't know what, what's going on. All right? And when you spend your money anywhere else, it's a good thing. Okay, watch this. I, I wrote something down, all right? I have here, people pay for what they want. And they pay for what they need. If they go someplace and they feel like they're getting what they need, what they want, they're going to pay for it. That's just the way it is. That's how, every, that's how the world go around. You could pay for anything in the world, and they won't be mad at you. You can give your money to anything in the world, but they won't be mad at you. But when you're led to give money to God, when you're led to give money in the church, Huh? Hallelujah. And why do you give money in the church? Because you've been touched. You've been blessed. You came here in some kind of way, got what you needed. What you needed might have been salvation. It could have been deliverance. It could have been encouragement. It could have got a spirit of depression off of you. It could have fixed your marriage when y'all was right about to cut loose on one another. Gave you wisdom on how to run your business, how to raise your children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing right here did you more good than almost anything on earth. And because of that, hallelujah, you feel led to give something back to God and his house. Yeah. Now, when you do that at church, somehow that's wrong in the world view. But when you go to McDonald's and that double quarter pounder do you just fine. I don't know how fine it could do you, but if you stick to it too much, you ain't going to be fine at all. <laughs> but you go and pay and you could buy as much of that as you want and nobody going to talk about you. You can go out there and order as many movies as you want on Amazon and nobody gonna talk about you. You can go down there, hallelujah, and buy as many prescription pills as you can get a prescription for. And nobody gonna talk about you. 
But the moment you try to give something to the church, that's when the devil mounts start bumping. Yep. Can, can you see it yet? Yes, sir. It's Satan. Yes. What does Satan want? Satan wants to keep the church broke so that the church cannot effectuate change. Satan don't want the church to own TV stations. Satan don't want the church to own radio stations. Satan don't want the church to lobby Congress to get laws changed. Satan want that money in the hands of wicked people so that the laws that come out going to be all about sin and changing our country for the worse and not the better. I, I'm giving y'all, I, 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 <laughs> Anthony, I don't know how much more I could give him. I, all you got to do is look good. He don't want the church to have nothing. All right? Now, let me go deeper into this. I want to get something straight for a second. All right? When you see a leader of a church enjoying the fruit of his or her labor, is the way it's supposed to be. In 1 Corinthians 9 and 14, huh? uh, or 9, 9, 9, 9, go to 9, 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treaded the corn. When they used to want to stamp that corn, they put an a ox in there, and they, he would stamp the corn or, or the grain, get it the way that the farmer want. And the, God wrote in the law about that ox. Don't you dare put a muzzle on that ox. As that ox is working, that corn, let his mouth be free. Because every time he working for you and doing that, let him get paid a little something. Eat him a little something. Hallelujah. And keep working. Okay? Okay? Let's keep reading. It says, does God take care of oxen? Yes, he does. Or verse 10, but Paul says, or say it he altogether for our sakes. Paul is saying that this ain't just applying to ox, oxen. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that plow it should plow in hope, and that he that thresh it in hope should be partaker of this hope. There's a commentary written about this on God Questions. It says, and I, I hope that I put that quote so y'all can help me in just looking at it. Uh, the quote says, regarding an ox and grain is from Deuteronomy 25.4, the final book of the Torah. This verse has both a specific and general application. Putting a muzzle on the ox would prevent it from eating grain while it was working. This might save the greedy people a small amount of grain, but it means that the ox, not being able to eat, can't replenish its strength while it's working. By allowing the ox to eat while it's working, going to make the ox work harder, work longer, and work more. Are you getting a revelation? I'm not talking about animals, no. I'm talking about the leaders of the church. How dare you going to let the leaders do all this and muzzle their mouth and say, you can't touch none of it. You can't touch none of it. Look, 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 look. He goes on. It is more sensible and fair to let the animal eat while it works. The net benefit is considerable. You're going to get more work done that way. You'll get better results that way. In the more general sense, as Paul is using it here, this also means it's both beneficial and fair for those who labor uh -huh. in teaching and preaching in the church to be paid for their work. This is primarily so they can devote their time and energy fully to the service of God and the congregation. I'm going to give y'all some praise. Ooh, is that not good? That's the Bible, though. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. 
Come on, come on, come on. Listen, I'm, I'm just curious. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 11. We, this, this is our last point, so we're going to just, let, let's work it out. Look at your neighbor and say, work it out. Work it out. All right? If we, Paul, Paul going back to uh, uh, leaders of the church getting paid, he says, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal or earthly things? This is the Bible right here. What is Paul saying? When you come to church, the life lessons that you learn from the scriptures, that'll give you the abundant life that you so desire. Salvation, deliverance, purpose, getting your marriage right, your children right, your job right, your finances right. Paul said, if we so tell you those spiritual things, those spiritual things are actually more valuable than your earthly things. It's more valuable than the $100 you're going to get. Right. It's more valuable. Huh? So Paul is saying, as teachers and preachers, as leaders of the church, the leaders are actually giving you more than you are giving them. Because I'm asking, how much is that salvation worth? How much is a solid marriage worth? How much is, is, is knowing how to raise your children? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. How much is how to raise your children right? How much is that worth? All right? It's the spiritual things that's going to give us eternal life and abundant life and knowing how to live a blessed life, free from addiction and poverty, yo. He said, Paul said, if we have sown to you spiritual things, this is a great thing that we reap some of your carnal things. And 12, if others be partakers of this power over you, are not we the rather? Paul saying, other people getting your money? <laughs> Who passed them? Netflix. <laughs> Hulu. <laughs> AT&T. Yeah. Cox. Huh? Paramount. Hollywood. Y'all go to the movies? What else getting your money? What else getting your money? Budweiser. Miller Lite. Hen a seat. <laughs> Paul said, if others have been partakers of this power over, you go and you spend your money other places where you're getting what you want. And those things not even really good for you. Paul say, how much more in the church that's giving you real things that you could live a real life? Come on, give y'all some praise. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Just a couple more verses. I promise you I'm having such a good time up here. Verse, verse 13, ver, ver, verse 12, hallelujah, going back. He says, nevertheless, we have not used this power. Paul said, Paul said, but we don't really talk about stuff like this a lot. Right. Paul said, but we suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel. Paul said, we don't talk about that lest we uh, uh, put an obstacle in the way of the gospel. That's right. That's right. We don't want people to talk about the church in a negative way. All right? Verse 13, do you not know that they which minister about the holy things live of or live off the things of the temple. Paul takes us back to the Old Testament. He said, don't you know in the Old Testament the Levites lived off the temple? He says, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with that altar. Everything that was on that altar belonged to the Levites. They ate the showbread. They ate the offerings. Oh, y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't. You don't know how deep this goes, some of y'all. Brent, don't turn to it, but get me ready, Numbers 18:21 in the NLT. When he makes this correlation with the Old Testament, the people who served in God's house lived off of God's house. All right? Then he comes back in 14 and he says, even so, in the New Testament, 
had the Lord ordained that they that preach the gospel should live of the gospel that they preach. Oh, oh, he, he taking the money in the church. You don't know your Bible. You don't know your Bible. That's the order that God gave from the Old Testament. You don't work for God and don't get paid by God. But Hollywood and the media done mess you up. It's like Oprah having a company but can't get paid off her company. Does that make any sense? I wonder when black people going to go back to their Bible. The Levites lived off the temple. Give me that scripture in the NLT for a second. <laughs> I'm just going to read it. I ain't going to say nothing about it. As for the tribe of Levi, that's the ones that ministered in the temple. I will compensate them for their service. In my house, the tabernacle, instead of an allotment of land, I'm not even giving them no land. There's, and when you go back to the land, there's no land designated the tribe of Levi. He didn't want them to work the land or have any type of manual labor job. Why? I'm not giving them no allotment of land. I will give them the tithes from the entire land. I wish I had a mic, I would have dropped it. <laughs> Let's go to 2 Timothy 5 and 17. I know you mom. Y'all talking about, they talking about people y'all don't, you. Should ministers and leaders of the church get paid? 2 Timothy 5, 17. Let the elders that rule well Rule well. You're doing a good job. If you're doing a good job, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. That's what y'all blessed me with that time. Y'all had that anniversary. Huh? I, I, I love that. I love that. You rule well, you should be worthy of double honor. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Paul says, for the scripture said, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treads the corn. And the laborer is worthy of his reward. If you work, if you work, you should get paid. Take this to the NLT and let it sizzle in your spirit. Come on, let, 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 let it soak. Verse 17, elders who do their work well. And that's why I say, if you don't think a pastor doing their work well, Go find you one that fits your definition of doing work well. Elders that do their work well should be two things. In NLT, it says that double honor, respected and paid well. Especially those who work hard both preaching and teaching. For the scripture says you must not muzzle an ox to keep it from eating as it treads out the grain. And in another place, those who work deserve their pay. <laughs> I think as a rule, we should stop talking about people. All right. Then I think we should look and see how well they do it. When we see how well the minister's doing, then we equate, is the church doing well? And if the church doing well, then they should be paid well. Amen. Got a lot of people putting their mouths on ministers and pastors whose churches are doing well. Now, I don't know about you, I take the word of God seriously. 
He said, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. He said, what you've done to the least of these, my brother, you have done it unto me. I don't see how you can justify talking about somebody that's doing more work than you, known more places than you, oversee more people than you, pay more people than you, getting more souls saved than you. I don't see how you can justify talking about somebody like that. So I will not put my mouth on Joel and Jake, and not, not for that, not for that. Or any of these other guys whose ministries are known beyond the gates of their cities. That's right. It just don't make no sense to me. If that ever happens, then I know that I've fallen into the hands of Satan's tricks. Yes. And I also know that whatsoever I speak upon somebody, I can, I can bet my bottom dollar that some things are going to come back towards me. Yes. And I have found that the ones who talk about the leaders of the church the most have the most drama, have the most pain, have the most hurt, have the most ratchet, beat up lies back in the world, back in sin, back in all kind of foolishness because they're talking about things that's above their pay grade. You just got to watch yourself. Just gotta watch yourself. Drink your coffee <laughs> and mind your business. Yeah. All right. I say to God, we're gonna go on. We done had a good time in here today. Yeah. We done had a good time up in here today. I promise you, we done had fun, fun. I don't know if I had more fun or you had more fun, but we done had some fun up in here. Yeah. And it's just to get our minds right, you know? And you know, you know, the Bible tells us to run our race. That's right. Come on. And certain things you can't control. That's right. At the end of the day, you just got to do what God telling you to do. Yeah. And God know how to deal with his shepherds. That people not doing something because somebody else not doing something. Yeah. I could see them on Judgment Day. <laughs> I'd be like, well, why you didn't support? Why you? Well, such and such was doing. Does that make void my commandment to you? Come on. Come on. Jesus. You know? And so, saints, listen, it's been a great weekend. I'm very happy today. I'm going to get a little rest after today, amen, and cool out. I'm going to bed when I leave here. I'm going, I'm going straight to bed. Hallelujah. People that preach know what I'm talking about. Once a week is a, is a, is a, is a tad. <laughs> My wife be looking at me, she say, right, boy, she say, you a soldier, boy. You a soldier. That's what she tell me. And I, I take that. I be like, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. All right. And, uh, but God's been good. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Saints, at this time, amen, we're going to call for the baskets. We're going to do tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. And then we're going we're gonna to do a little altar time, and then we're going to get out of here. Come on, uh, ushers, y'all, come on up right now. Hallelujah. As you get ready to give, amen, I pray that you take advantage of everything that we talked about. Um, and don't be quick to, to want me to stop talking about tithes and offerings. Because as we talk about it, Miss Cynthia, you can just put down right in the middle right there. Yeah, that'll work just right there. Hallelujah. As we talk about it, you're going to notice your life getting blessed more and more and more and more and more. <laughs> When you come here and you hear me talking about that, you should, you should be happy. Because when God decides to talk about tithe to his church, hallelujah, uh, 
Hallelujah. When God decides to talk about tithing his church, it means that he's ready to bless his people. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah, they're giving, they giving already, and so I'm going to get out the way, amen, because people are ready to give. They're giving already. I see you, Tanya, Eaglin, hallelujah, Victoria, see, they're giving already. Hallelujah, they say, Pastor, you done waste too much time. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Hallelujah, rising on the roof. They're giving already. Hallelujah. Join in this awesome fragrance of offering that we're giving to our God right now. Philadelphia is offering time. Come on up in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord bless you, Lord bless you. Lord bless you a hundredfold. Lord bless you a hundredfold. Lord bless you, Lord bless you. Hundredfold blessing. Overflow, overflow in your life. Hundredfold, hundredfold. Woo! Running over, running over. Hundredfold, hundredfold. Ha! Shaking together. Hey! Hundredfold in your life. so good. And I'm telling you, as you give to the Lord, God's going to open up the windows of heaven and bless you. And bless you not only with stuff and things, but the most important thing. Stretch forward with your hands and let's pray a blessing on these tithes and offerings. Most high God, we thank you for your word. And we know that you're able to do what you said you would do. So Father, be true like we know you will be. Uh, let your word go out and accomplish the purpose for what you sent it out as your people have given to your house we pray that you're blessed Woo. 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over in their life. Make all grace abound to them now. Search the baskets, the boxes, simple give, PayPal, search Cash App, search every form of giving God to Philadelphia. Make a list, Daddy. And don't forget a single one on that list, Daddy. Bless them all, overflow in a hundredfold, with the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give him some praise in this house, in this house, in this house. Hallelujah. Ushers, y'all can come on up. Hallelujah. Listen, hallelujah. We're going to transition yet again. Hallelujah. If for some reason you need altar time, uh, either because of some personal things or maybe you want to be saved, uh, uh, if for some reason you need altar time because of the things even that we talked about, any type of spirit that we talked about, greed, or covetousness, or, 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 or even people have come and, and put some slander in your ear, your ear, lost folk, people in sin that don't know the church, don't know God, but they see, seem somehow to know how the church should run. But you saw the scriptures today. And you know that between God's word and your heart, there is an inconsistency there. And you need a touch from God, a deliverance from God, so that you can give freely. Freely we receive, freely we ought to give. So we're going to have some altar time. And I, I feel in the spirit that this series on tithing is instrumental for us as a people getting back to who we really are. I promise you that. We give Uncle Sam his, but we ain't giving God his. We have forever been building somebody else's nation instead of being committed to build our own nation. <laughs> this tithing message is, is, is God giving you the keys to your very own. Amen. And instead of paying taxes to a fallen, deplorable, reprobate, ooh, I better stop before I get a call. <laughs> you can pay your tithe, your kingdom tax, to a kingdom nation that's going to stand for the principles of God. Woo! But get out your way. The altar's open. You can come. 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 Come on. Come on. Come to this altar if you need. Come flood it. Come flood it. Come flood it.
Hallelujah. Before we pray, just understand a few things. We all sinners. But Jesus died for our sins. His death on the cross pays for our salvation. It's not by our works. But it's by his blood that we're saved. And all we got to do is believe, the Bible says. When we believe, all we got to do is ask. It says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're about to call on him right now, and he's going to save you. He's going to forgive you, and he's going to bless you. Hallelujah. Just like they were doing that awesome, that awesome African dance before church. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? That dance was amazing. That dance was amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, that, that drum, that beat, had you dancing in your seat. Huh? That's some of you, hallelujah, God's going to touch you at this altar. And the next time they're going to be dancing, God's going to give you something to dance for. You're going to be dancing with them. You're going to be out there. You're going to be dancing with him. You're going to be dancing with him. He's going to give you something to dance for. In the name of Yahshua Hamashiach. Let's go to the Most High in prayer. Amen. Say, Most High God. Thank you for loving me. I admit. I've done some wrong. And I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And save me. I believe. I believe. In the, cross in the cross of Yahshua. Of Yahshua. I, believe he died. I believe he died. I believe he was buried. I believe he was buried. And I believe he rose again. And I believe he rose again. Please forgive me, Please forgive me. of all my sins. All my sins. Wash, away Wash away everything. The secret sins. The, secret sins. the open sins. The open sins. Wash away everything. Wash away everything. And use me for your glory. Make me a giver. A tither. Take my strength. My mind. And prosper me. So I can support your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you. Bless you. And bless you. Hallelujah. This is the Rice family, y'all. North Carolina is in the house. Hallelujah. Shalom, peace. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful, glorious name we pray. Amen. 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 Love y'all. Be blessed. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, everybody. We are so glad that you stayed tuned with us. Thank you for sticking around for the Reflections Post Show. I am Deaconess Shalanda, and today I have a special guest with me today. So, you want to tell everybody who you are? Yes, I'm um, Deacon Donna oh, yeah. Thorn. And who are you? I am her husband. Yes, my husband is with me, y'all, on today. Thank you. <laughs> How y'all doing? Hey, hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So tell everybody who you are and where you guys are from. Well, my name is Rice and we're from Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte. This is my wife, Takesha. Hi, Takesha. Yes, we so, you guys? I'm good, I'm good, good. So glad to have y'all here with us. So how was, I'm gonna start with the word first and then we're gonna get into the marriage conference. So okay. how was that word for y'all on today? Awesome. Oh, I have a little notes, but I'm going to try to be brief. Okay, go ahead. Um, today about tithing and offering, I think I do want to share my testimony. Like, it's very important to tithe. Yeah. Um, to give back to God. And the 10%. Because... So many times we be coming up short, and right before Pastor did this message, I was like, Lord, what's going on? I ain't trying to be funny. We need more. Something's not right. 
why we keep coming up short all the time? And we were tithing, but at the same time, you have to be in the right mind state as well. You got to have a giving heart. You can't be like, oh, Lord, like you owe him something. I don't know why people feel like you owe you owe God. He don't owe you. Right. We don't tell him what to do. He tell us what to do. Right. <laughs> and... I'm so sorry. I just no, got so much. Take your time. And good. One, one other thing I really want to emphasize about so many times people don't want to bless the man of God. It is very important, just like you said, if you don't wear his shoes, you don't do what he do, then I don't, one, I don't feel like you're obligated to, to say anything. Two, why not let him be blessed? Yeah. And it was like Aaron Beard. Don't it fall from head down? <laughs> so if the man of God is blessed, right. you're going to be blessed. Right. So I think everyone should just keep that in mind. Amen. <laughs> bless him. Bless his family. Even the ministry has everything. Um, and then... I was even going to say this. We, our children work. Our children work. We even have them to tithe. We talk to them about tithing offering. My son made a joke one time, but I was like, well, God ain't going to do this. I said, well, listen, he ain't came short up on you. You ain't going to come short up on him. Amen. And it's good to teach him now. Yes. Young. Young. Yes. Mm -hmm. At Absolutely. an early age. Absolutely. Now. You want to talk about the marriage conference? Yeah, yeah. Well, she ready to talk about the marriage conference. Okay. Yes, yes. Awesome. How was that for you guys? What was your experience? What did you take away from the marriage conference this weekend? Um, it was awesome. We didn't get to come the whole time because of our flights and everything. But the marriage conference was awesome. I the um, somebody they tell them you want you you live. I know, right? That was my alarm because we have to go to the flight. Okay. So I'm going to be brief. Um, the panel session, I, I got here at the panel session. Okay. Oh, that was very awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that was very real. I'm glad that they were very honest and open. Um, I went to the breakout session with the plant and the berry. Okay. And they ended up having to pray for me in there. And we prayed. And after, you know, we prayed, other people came out and we talked. And um, I also want to tell you guys, all of you guys are awesome. We greatly appreciate you guys' fellowship. We appreciate the love. We appreciate the prayers, everything. And let's go back to the man of God falling down. I'm going to be brief. I'm going to wrap it up. Yeah. The, truth, the, free, the tree is known by the fruit that it bears. I can bear witness, everyone that I came in contact with was awesome. From the man of God all the way to the person in the pew. I have no complaints. I wouldn't complain anyway. So all the ministers, all the people, everybody was full of love, authentic, and very real. And we greatly appreciate you guys for having us. Oh, look, we are so happy that you guys came. I know, I remember you. y'all came in a little late, but y'all was y'all here. Yes. And y'all made it, and y'all caught it. So we are so happy to have y'all. We love when our people from, you know, out of town come in and visit with us. So, yeah. Yeah. Anything okay, you wanted I'll... to add to it? Well, I can say that the marriage conference, I was late. And I understand that every time God has something for you, Satan takes his first oh, swing. And I can honestly say when I walked in the building, everything that I had gone through with the flights and all the weight that was on me, it was lifted. Mm. So anybody who's tuning in, just walking in this place, you can feel the glory of God in this building. Mm. And, you know, I tell my wife all the time, every chance that I can be here, I want to be here. Because walking in here, it replenishes you mm. of everything that the world is taking from you. So everybody in the area, this is a blessed place. And I truly thank God that we found it and that he chose a vessel to teach his word. Yes, we are blessed. We really are blessed. So happy to have y'all. Y'all coming back for Passover? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Lord's will. We're going to bring right. the Rice Crew members with us. All right. Well, we will definitely be looking forward to seeing you guys again. Y'all have a wonderful, safe trip back. Yes, ma'am. Hopefully all those flights go well. Going back home. Yes. yes
But it was so good to have y'all here. Thank y'all so much for coming and talking to us. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you yes, guys for having thank us. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Y'all be blessed. Y'all be blessed. Thank y'all. Hopefully we get to spend time next time. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys again. All right. Oh, wow. It's, so, uh, it's awesome to have uh, when we get to meet everybody from out of town. I'm so glad they always have such a good experience while they are here. So, so babe, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you. What was that word like for you today? And look, hold your mic up so people can hear you. The word was... Yes. Yes. All right. We're gonna get into the um, to the marriage conference, but I hear I have heard we have a guest coming up. Hey, sweetheart. How are you? Why don't you tell everybody your name? Eliana. Eliana. And so, Eliana, what was that word like for you on today, sweetie? She got notes, y'all. I love it. <laughs> don't love money. Don't love money. Yes. And so, why shouldn't we love money? God does not want us to love money. And when you love money, you will do everything just to get the money you want. Yes, and some things, and when we love money, sometimes it don't make us do things God don't want us to do, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we definitely shouldn't love money. So anything else, Eliana, you want to share with the people? When the only reason God gave us money is to take care of ourselves, but also we have to give tithes with them. And if you don't give tithes, that means you're stealing from God. Yes, and we don't want to steal from God, right? Right. So what everybody has to do, what should what should everybody do? Tithe, right? That 10%. Y'all heard it from Eliana. She said, tithe. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for coming and sharing. And I love that you take notes. I'm going to have to learn from you because I'm going to have to keep up with my notes just like you. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Yes. Out of the mouths of babies, y'all. The children, the children are, know how to tithe, and so they're going to push us to do what we, we should be doing and, and tithing. So, so yes, yeah, so the word was amazing as always. I just love how um, Pastor breaks it down and breaks down the word and explains exactly why we do what we do. Because, um, y'all, we are truly called to tithe, and, and, and that's what it is. We're truly called to tithe, and I love that he um, that put the scripture up. It is the, um, gosh, I can't think of it because I want to say it, but we always say um, money. Money is the root of evil, but it's not the money. It's the love of the money that is the root of evil, as Eliana said. It'll make us do things. Um, when we love money that we really shouldn't be doing and that we're not called to do so. Um, don't love it. It's good to have it, but not to love it. So we're we not going to love it. We're not going to love it. So just to recap a little bit, this weekend was awesome, you guys. The marriage conference was amazing. So what are some of the highlights for you from the marriage conference? Let's say the first night, I guess, with the race. That was pretty good and pretty awesome. Um, the breakout sessions especially. Yes. We always have the Lord in our midst because with us just being one or two, we're not as strong as being the three. Amen. Amen. And yes, uh, to piggyback on you, yes, uh, that was a really great class. Um, yeah, because you know it's important to keep God at the center of our relationships, you guys. And and also the Friday evening was it was hilarious y'all we had an amazing time um we got to paint a little bit relax you know because the, the movements of life we don't get to just say la and enjoy each other and we were able to do that on friday evening we danced we laughed we ate it was just a really great time so if you weren't able to make it to this marriage conference i would highly 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 encourage you to begin to plan for the next one as y'all heard Y'all, we're going somewhere tropical. It's going to be sunny, water, the beach. I'm ready. You ready? 
we gonna go? All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. So again, it's just a regular week here at Philly this week. We will have noonday prayer Monday through Friday at um, 1215 p.m. to 1 p.m. here. So if you have a break and you are local, come on out and join us for noonday prayer. Also this week, we will have Thursday evening prayer sponsored by our Darkest Ministry. That will be going on this evening, this Thursday evening at 6 p.m. And after prayer, there will be a light meal. I understand they're going to give us a little food. So if you are, again, in the area, come on out. Join us for Thursday evening prayer on this Thursday at 6 p.m. Also, our Bible studies, Tuesday here in Lafayette, Bible study will be 7 p.m. Wednesday, Atlanta, your Bible study will be going on on Wednesday evening at 7.30. And then coming on um, down Thursday, Dallas, your Bible study will be happening at 7 p.m. As Minister Rodney Party came up here, encourage you all um, to, to go out and join them for that fellowship on Thursday evening. Those Bible studies are amazing. So if you are in any of those areas, Atlanta or the Dallas area, make sure to go out and join them for Bible study. And then, babe, we got some good events coming up. We got Feed the Block coming up. Um, that is when we will be celebrating Purim. That is going to go on March 20th through the 22nd. And then the 22nd, one of my favorite events um, that we have here, Worship Night. Worship Night 2024 will be going on on Friday, March 22nd. So hey, if you are able to come down and join us, come on out and join us. Worship Night is always a good time we tear the roof off the spirit moves so worship night and then passover, passover. you ready ready y'all we working on getting ready for it because passover it's amazing we're gonna have a great time um passover will be april 24th through the 28th go ahead if you haven't made your plans to come go ahead and start making those plans to come on down come on down and join us for passover you won't regret it. It's a big family reunion. We have such an amazing time. And we are so looking forward to meeting and seeing all of you for Passover. So anything else you want to add? Y'all, I just, I, I got to say thank you to my husband for coming up here. This is definitely not in his comfort zone at all. So thank you, babe, for joining me today. And it's his birthday today, y'all. So another huge shout out. Happy birthday, Jonathan. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I'm so happy um, to be your wife. So we're going to go ahead and close out. So can I get you to... Um, closes that no he said no y'all he's not used to this but we're gonna go ahead and close out in prayer and um father god we just thank you on today we thank you for allowing us to be here we thank you father god for such a wonderful word going forth we thank you for placing us in a blessed place lord god with a blessed uh a pastor who truly loves you and truly loves the people that are here lord god we just we thank you we thank you for the awesome time that we had uh for the marriage ministry we just thank you for every word that went forth um god everything that we learned on this weekend and the time that we had we just thank you father and we pray that you be with us this week that you guide us guide our feet everywhere that we go lord god may this week be may this week be a blessed week lord god and may we always remember to give you all the glory honor and all the praise for it father for all that you do in jesus name we pray amen and amen thank you guys again for joining us shalom everybody <laughs>